Welcome to episode 120 of the Highly Relevant Podcast, a Latinx show where I interview the people and discuss the moments that are shaping our American and Latino pop culture. My guest this week on the podcast is veteran Mexican actor Eric Heiser. You have guys seen him on Netflix's Ingobernable. Well, he has a new show on Telemundo called Preso Número Uno, Prisoner Number One, which is a political thriller where he plays the president of Mexico, again, uh, who is accused of a crime he didn't commit. We discuss why political themes have not been prevalent on Spanish language primetime, if English language Latinos will watch it, if he still auditions at this stage of his career, and his thoughts on how he sees social media in his professional and personal life. But before I talk to Eric, it's time to give you my weekly pop culture news recap in a segment I like to call Jacked It. Let's begin with the top movie news of the week. Javier Bardem is in talks to play King Triton in Disney's live-action Little Mermaid. Maluma is in talks to co-star in Jennifer Lopez's rom-com Marry Me. Puerto Rico film Imprisoned, starring Isai Morales, Edward James Olmos, and Lawrence Fishburne, will premiere September 10th. Oscar Isaac is set for an off-Broadway production of Chekhov's Three Sisters. Kate Del Castillo is on an off-Broadway show in New York. And Paul Rodriguez and Horatio Sands are currently filming the CGI dog film Clifford in Brooklyn, New York. In TV news, Emmy nominated are out and there are major declines in diversity and inclusion. Mario Lopez has been officially announced as the host of Access Hollywood beginning September 9th. Gossip Girl reboot gets series order at HBO Max. And Jane the Virgin narrator Anthony Mendez receives his third primetime Emmy for PBS's Wonder Mexico. Switching over to music, Puerto Rico artists Residente and Ileana Cabra have released protest song Afilando Los Cuchillos to support the resignation of Puerto Rico Governor Ricardo Rosselló, chairman of Univision Jaime Saban to launch a new record label. And Premios Juventud announced his live performances by Maluma, Pitbull, Daddy Yankee, Romel Santos, and Pedro Capo. And in tech and social media news, 150 million people have downloaded the Russian viral app FaceApp, but Democrats warn against it. Apple is planning to buy up original podcasts. Netflix's stock tumbles due to major loss of U.S. subscribers, and Instagram has expanded, hiding its likes in seven countries, including Brazil, Italy, and Japan. Alto. Nombre completo, señor. Carmelo Alvarado Mateos. Ocupación, señor. Presidente de la República. Protesto guardar y hacer guardar la Constitución Política de la Nación. Hey, Eric, what's going on, man? <laughs> Everything's good. <laughs> I'm, glad, uh, I'm glad to have the opportunity to talk to you. You're starring in a brand new series on Telemundo called Preso Número Uno. And I think, you know... I think the first question to me is, is this a novella or is it a series? And what's the difference between both? <laughs> yeah, well, this is this is not a telenovela. This is not a soap. Uh, actually, it's a it's a series. It's it's uh, uh, but it's a longer than the, the, the series we're uh, used to see in, in other networks. Uh, but the difference between a novella and the series is, uh, first of all, the stories and the way we tell these stories and uh the production values too uh, with this one we're trying to set higher standards in this long format uh, series in, in open television in a channel like telemundo we're trying to uh set higher standards not only in terms of production but also mm -hmm. in the way we're telling the stories interesting so preso numero uno what is it about <laughs> well, it's a story of uh, Carmelo Alvarado. He's a man that comes from uh, a man who came uh, from nothing to become the the president of uh, of Mexico. It's a story about uh, uh, suspense, uh, conspiracies, betrayal, and a lot of action. This story tells a lot about the relationship between Mexico and the U.S., but also it's a story about how um, corruption has uh, has brought a lot of problems to mm. Latin America. It talks about how um, the economic uh, power uh, rules over the political power in our country. You know, it's interesting because... I've, I've grown up watching Telemundo and Univision for such a long time, and it is so rare to see a story about 
politics, a political thriller be on their network on prime time. Why do you think the themes of politics or political thrillers haven't really been a, a, a consistent mainstay in Spanish language primetime? I guess because times have changed so much. I mean, uh, we were used to see different, different stories in this, in this network and in Hispanic networks. I mean, we were used to see, uh, formats, uh, closer to the telenovela or telenovelas like that. And we were used to see, uh, we used to see only like love, uh, love stories and, yeah, the uh, Cinderella stories. Yeah. But now, I mean, times have changed so much that, uh, this kind of story, like, like Preso Numero Uno, it's not only, uh, it, it's necessary. I mean, people want to see products like these products that go beyond entertainment products, which are closer to our reality. And, uh, I, I really feel that that that's why it's really necessary to tell a story like Preso Numero Uno, because, uh, as a spectators nowadays, we also want to see products that are closer to our reality. Obviously, you're doing this interview in English. The show uh, and the series is not in English. It's spoken in Spanish. But right. there is a bilingual market now uh, that the television networks have embraced. Because mm -hmm. before, they would ignore that bilinguals would be even interested in Spanish language TV. But as an actor who's working in Spanish and English and so forth, in your particular case, do you believe, what are your thoughts on bilinguals who are more American and maybe English first, do you believe that they're still interested in watching Spanish language content? Yeah, definitely. And uh, I think it really has to do with the quality and the kind of stories uh, we're building up right now in the Hispanic market. Uh, 10 years ago, you, you couldn't believe that uh, someone which only speaks English would be interested in, uh, in watching a uh, an Hispanic or a Latin production with subtitles. That didn't <laughs> happen before. But, right. Uh, what's happening right now is that everything's like globalized. Uh, we're starting to, uh, to produce and to tell uh, like international stories now, uh, stories that have to do much more with the human being than with the situations and with the, uh, with the, the stories we, 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 we were telling before. So uh, right now we're, this, I mean, it's it's totally global what we're doing. We're telling um, stories which uh, include not only uh, Latin and Mexican customs, but we're talking uh, about human beings. And that's why I really think that the uh, U.S. market, it's uh, starting to... Uh, to look at us in a very different way. So on Netflix, you played also the president of Mexico in Ingobernable, right. and now you're playing the president of Mexico <laughs> again. Is this headed towards some sort of typecasting for you? Or are you okay with that? <laughs> no, actually, it's a challenge for me. Uh, it, I, I, I had to go uh, through, uh, through saying no at the beginning and then saying no again and then saying, yes, I will play... Uh, this president in this story of, of president. Why did you want to play this again? Because there's a lot of actors that complain about not doing the same thing over and over again. And it's yeah. a problem I've had with, you know, I've, I've spoken to with Kate Del Castillo. She's mm -hmm. always playing the strong, fearless woman that's running for her life with a gunner in her hand, you know? Yeah. And I, I was, I was asking her, do you feel like you're being typecast that that's the only thing that people want you to do, but your artistic sensibility is always screaming for different types of challenges where you can, you can demonstrate your versatility. So why did you do this? Uh, because it represents a challenge for me and, uh, they're totally different characters, even though they're, they're both presidents. Uh, this character now, Carmelo Alvarado, it's a totally different character from, uh, Diego Nava, which was one that I played before in, in Ingobernable. Mm -hmm. And why, why am I saying that? Because they come from two totally different places. And the story itself, it's, uh, both stories are, are, are completely different. So, uh, that's why I took the challenge because I, I'm not afraid of being, um, compared and, uh, there's no way that the characters can be compared uh, other than there are presidents. I mean, they're totally different. So uh, that's why I said yes, and uh, and I'm playing a president again. Do you still even audition? Yes. <laughs> okay, what yeah, is that I, like? I, I, what I, is that like for you still <laughs> at this stage of the game? 
scary. That was the, 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 the first uh, the first word that came to my mind. No, I I, I still audition. I mean, uh, what was the last was time you auditioned for a project? Um, two weeks ago. <laughs> and and what is that experience like? Because I think you know, for someone like you who's been working and gigging for such uh-huh. a long time, do you at some point start saying to yourself? you know what? I don't want to audition anymore. I think my resume speaks for itself. I should just walk in and get the gig. And if not, I'm not auditioning anymore. <laughs> yeah, it happens from time to time. But uh, whenever that happens, I think that that's my ego talking. Mm. So uh, I, I try to uh, put my feet, uh, my feet on the ground and say, hey, it's uh, it's always challenging. It's always exciting to, uh, to go to an audition. And it's also... Uh, for me, it has to do really with uh, with putting my feet on the ground again and saying, "Hey, Eric, you have to earn it every step of the way." How how do you describe this stage of your career compared to when you were younger, just starting out in the business? Does it get easier, Eric, or does it get more difficult? I don't know if the word it's easier, but it's uh, I can enjoy it much more right now, and uh, I say I really can enjoy it much more because now I'm getting. Uh, the opportunity to uh, choose my projects. Before I was uh, working in whatever project I could do because I was uh, building up a career. And that's the only way uh, to get uh, ex- new experiences, to uh, to get better and better. But right now, I, I really can say that I enjoy it much more because I get to choose the type of characters and the type of projects I want to be a part of. Now, what about English language, television, movies, There's a lot of Hispanics that I've spoken to that sometimes feel a bit afraid or almost intimidated of working in these productions because they have felt a form of discrimination, a form of you're a star in your market, but once you go into English, that stardom begins to diminish and people just don't want to deal with it. A lot of actors just don't want to deal with it. They'd rather stay in their zone. In your particular case, do you want to work in English language TV or do you want to stay in Spanish language TV uh, projects? No, definitely. I, I want to do it. As I was telling you before, I've always been uh, like an actor that loves changing, that loves challenges. That I, I, I don't like to repeat my, uh, my characters or my looks, and I'm constantly moving to places where I don't feel comfortable. So yes, uh, I, I, I was almost closing down a project uh, a couple of weeks uh, ago that was going to be uh, an English-speaking and uh, yes, that's something that I want to do uh, for the next projects. And not only in English. I mean, I also speak French and I also speak uh, Flemish. So uh, I would love to uh, to keep on working in other languages too. Okay, you got to tell me about the Flemish part. How do you know <laughs> Flemish? <laughs> I did my last year of high school in Belgium as an exchange student, and I was living in the in the Flemish part. So that's how I got to uh, to learn Flemish and also uh, French. Preso Numero is coming out in July. Do you sit down on the premiere in your sofa and watch yourself on TV on on, uh, opening night? Or is it something (laughs) that, "Ah, I'm not going to do that. Let everybody else watch it. Or do you indulge in the work that you do? Yeah, I I, I love doing it. I mean, uh, before I I couldn't do it. I was too uh, critic with myself. But (laughs) I don't know, for the past five years or six years, I've been trying to enjoy it. And so, so yeah, definitely whenever I have a premiere uh, of a series or a future film, I'm always there. We should definitely do like a party, like your fans, the press, come to your house, watch that it together. And yeah, you know, have like a big party for that. <laughs> well, my house is not that big. I mean, my apartment, I wish I had more space so I could really uh, invite everyone over. But but yeah, I, 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 that's what, where I try to connect. I mean, I, I do lives and uh, I do a lot of uh, Instagram stories so that fans feel that they're with me watching the the premiere. That is so cool. Bueno, Eric, thank you so much. Appreciate your time and congratulations on the work that you're doing. Uh, Like, I think for a lot of people, they're going to start thinking that you're the real president of Mexico (laughs) as opposed to Andres. (laughs) Let's see what happens. Let's hope that that brings them closer to to the story we were telling. (laughs) Last question, social media. Are you an active participant in social media? Do you like social media? Do you feel that uh, social media is bad for people. Like, what is your take on social media, and how do you interact with it? I, I like social media. I mean, I'm not one of uh, these people that uh, 
that that has their telephone and it's on their telephone all the time uh, connecting with uh, social media and uploading uh, images about what they had for breakfast <laughs> uh, or what they're, what, what they're doing. Uh, I try to connect from the professional part, uh, trying to be closer to my fans and to uh, all these spectators that watch uh, everything that I do uh, whenever I have a new project and whenever I'm, I'm doing something, something uh, professionally. But definitely, I, I, I think that it, social media, it's necessary to uh, not only for... Um, not only personally, but but also uh, professionally. It's uh, It puts you on the spot. Thank you so much, Eric. Uh, thanks a lot for being on the podcast. Thanks to you. Great talking to you, Jake. And before I head out, here are four Latin tracks you might want to add to your playlist this weekend. Amor. Querer Mejor, Juanes and Alicia Caro. Señorita, Sean Mendes and Camila Cabello. La canción Bad Bunny y J Bell. Como amigo, Katia. And that's it for episode 120 of the Highly Relevant Podcast. I want to thank Eric Heiser for coming on the show. And if you'd like to support this podcast, please spread the love on social media and tell all your friends about it. You can reach me on Instagram at Jack Rico and on my Facebook page at Jack Rico Fort. Remember, it's only through your support that the show can grow. I'm Jack Rico. See you next week on another episode of Highly Relevant. <laughs> <laughs>